Uh, the book is called The Real College Debt Crisis, How Student Borrowing Threatens Financial Well-Being and Erodes the American Dream. The book argues that the student debt model of college finance is fundamentally broken, that, that debt burdens financially cripple adults uh, in ways that prevent them from fully participating in life, uh, and that those burdens and that lack of full participation uh, has major consequences for us as a nation. Uh, they also argue, because of that, that, that this is not a moment for tinkering around the edges, uh, that this is a moment that lends itself towards a paradigm shift, that we ought to be thinking about replacing the model of college finance that we currently utilize from, from one that is debt-driven uh, to a model that relies on savings, to a model that relies on asset building, and to a model that relies on really significant early investments in children's lives. One of the primary purposes of education is to create equity, to be this equalizer, and that effort and ability should lead to some kind of desired outcome, similar outcomes to other people. Um, then we start thinking about how is our financial aid system helping the education do that or not helping education do that, right? And wh what we think about student debt is uh, really it comes down to access. What, what student debt does is it creates access, right? The book, we're trying to expand our, our notion of what financial aid is supposed to do in the first place. It also matters how it's affecting preparation for college, right? It matters about access, but also completion and long-term financial health. And if we begin to ask a different question, not just whether or not the student who goes to college uh, and gets debt is better off, if we ask that is he or she able to achieve similar long-term financial outcomes as someone who didn't take out debt, uh, we start seeing uh, slightly different uh, results. Right? Student debt is not simply about whether people are defaulting. Right? That, that's not the only problem they face. We can cover that up with income-based repayment plans and many other kinds of things to, to make sure people don't default. But it's also about whether or not they can build assets over the long term. And that's about economic mobility. So the idea that someone who's just doing the only thing that they can do just to get to the starting point, um, that we should think of them as a debtor where if you know, there's a medical emergency or if they have some bad luck or something and they can't pay their loan back, that we start thinking of them as a defaulter and, and treating them the way we treat other kinds of debtors is, I think, intensely problematic and, and a, a bigger and bigger problem for more and more people. Four in ten borrowers who are low income in higher education drop out with debt. I mean, that's a, a huge number, and these are people who, for whom Kevin's talking about that we sort of, you know, just sort of brand them with the sort of scarlet D, debtor or defaulter or delinquent letter, and, you know, just sort of go after them and try to get their money back, right? Um, that's not really the point of education or higher education. Um, and I think we should, again, grapple with the consequences of that. So rather than having a conversation about some magic number below which debt would probably be OK, we need to instead be thinking about how do we collectively finance and facilitate educational attainment so that then children and families and Americans, is who we're talking about, are positioned to make good choices um, where today they often have none. When you really put an equity frame on it, and if we think about education, and it really should have, and you know, I worked hard, I did well, I achieved well in school, I, I should be able to achieve, you know, you know, similar outcomes to someone who worked as hard and did as well. I mean, there's that sense of that, right? And if 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 student debt is is making us delay uh, 401k, delay buying a house, and delay doing these other kind of things, that is just fundamentally problematic because if we don't do those things early on. Even though I'm, I have all the same credentials as someone else, my wealth trajectory later in life is going to be much different. We've come to conflate grants and loans. They just kind of trips off our tongue. Grants and loans. Well, grants and loans are not the same thing. Loans are not financial aid. I, I mean, I wish I could just say this over and over. Student loans are not financial aid. If I go to a car dealer um, and they say, well, finance the car, they're not doing me a favor. <laughs> you know, they're like, I mean, they're doing it because it's in their interest to kind of help me buy what they're selling. Um, loans are not financial aid.